Hey, welcome to our YouTube. We're about to listen to a message from our church here in Hillsong, Denmark and Malmo from one of our team members. Make sure to comment below, like, subscribe, or even share with a friend and stick around afterwards for different ways to connect. We're going to pray together and, um, and really believe for God to speak to us. Amen. And um, also a massive happy Father's Day to all the dads. Um, one day we'll be dads, granddads, uh, in church today. And uh, I just want to encourage you today and just say you're doing a lot better than you think you are. And, um, and I just know the grace of God covers a multitude of mistakes. Amen. And we're just going to believe that no matter what you experience the Father's Day today, you know, whatever, you know, whether today is a happy day or whether it's a day is a reminder of maybe who wasn't in your world, uh, who's not in your world, or maybe, maybe it wasn't the, the picture you had hoped um, for a dad to be in your world. We're just going to believe that today that you will have a revelation of the perfect father, the father in heaven. Amen. And so why don't we just, why don't we pray and uh, just commit the next few moments to, to God. Jesus, we just thank you so much for this day, Father's Day. You taught us to pray, Jesus, our Father who are in heaven. And Lord, we just, we come to you now, Lord God, not as, not as slaves, not as workers, Lord. We come to you as sons and daughters. And I just pray for every person that's here today, Lord God, I just pray that you will speak to them. I just pray you will speak through me, Lord God, like I believe you've spoken to me, Lord Jesus. And I just pray whether they're in the room, online, over in another location, in parents' lounge, wherever they might be, Lord Jesus, under the sound of my voice, Lord, I just pray that today may we just leave more in love with you than when we came in. We just commit these next moments to you, Lord God, and we just hide behind the cross, Lord Jesus, and just pray that you will be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Why don't you give someone a high five or a fist bump or a hug? or a kiss on the cheek, whatever's appropriate. Massive shout out to the dad band. I mean, my goodness. They are, they are not scheduled to be on tonight, but I don't know. I don't know if we can do peer pressure. I don't know what it's gonna take to get them back tonight. Uh, we do have an earlier service tonight. Tonight we are starting our summer service, PM times, which means our summer service times at, in the evening is now five o'clock. Uh, which means there is plenty of time after the service to go out and have dinner with friends. Even if you're on team, there is still time afterwards to hang out and, you know, just, just enjoy the evening. And um, so I don't know. I don't know if it's possible. I'm looking at at least half of the crew to get them here tonight. Um, I do know they're available to be booked. And so tomorrow, for those of you that are having different celebrations with Gronlo's Day, if you're needing a last-minute band, um, I believe that Marlena is their manager. She's just up the back. So you can just go to her. There is a fee, of course. There is a fee. One of them is, is an accountant. So uh, there is a fee. And so I'm just um, letting you know, um, we, uh, we will definitely see them again at some point. That's the problem with excelling at something, is that you put yourself on the map. And uh, so they are now in rotation in the church life, church system. And uh, I don't know, I, I think in Olbo and Aarhus, I'm sure that there is some dad bands over there as well. And we need to, we need to get them out of, the, out of the shadows as well. But, you know, I want to I wanna obviously speak to everyone today, but I also want to make a, a special reference to the men. Uh, we, are having, we are giving coffee to everyone. Someone did ask me, what if uh, dads don't like coffee? Um, I think if you've been dad long enough, you do like coffee. Uh, especially if you've got more than one child, you force yourself to like coffee. Can somebody say amen? And we have the coffee from the amazing place, Hip Hop. And if you want ground, I don't think we have a gr grinder here, but you know, it's literally like a 10 minute walk from here, Hip Hop Coffee. Go down there and Luke, he will, he will talk your ear off about how amazing this coffee is. And it is amazing. And uh, I'd encourage you to pop by and say hi down there. But, you know, I think most men, men and women, but I think most men, they want their lives to matter. And, you know, to matter might not mean changing the world, but it does mean changing someone's world. And at the end of the day, we just want our lives to matter. You know, we want to... You know, we've all, every single one of us, we get given certain things, certain opportunities. You know, we get given things to steward in life. You know, steward. Uh, in Danish, it's called favelde. 
you know, to steward something and to steward it well enough that one day we will leave this reality, this earth, and we will step into heaven, into eternity, where hopefully all of our aim is to hear the famous, famous words of Jesus in Matthew 25, 30, uh, 23, that says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. You see, every single one of us, we get given time, talent, and treasure to steward. Every single one of us, we get given family and friends to steward. Every single one of us, we get given opportunities to steward. Every single one of us, we get given blessings and hurt to steward. And I mean that because I think when we talk about what's a steward in life, it's not just the good stuff. We also get given, just by living in a broken world, we get given pain to steward. And how you steward that, how you steward pain, I would almost say that how we steward setbacks is just as, if not more important, than how we steward blessings. I know when I see, you know, I see people that have been part of this church for the last 10 years, eight years, seven years, I can tell you the ones who have my deepest respect are those that have stewarded pain well. Not just stewarded the good times, but stewarded pain, stewarded setbacks, stewarded disappointments, stewarded, you know, hurt, real hurt. And those are, the, those are the things, you know, your children are gonna look at, your friends are gonna look at, not just what did you do in the good days? What do we do when everything was going well? No, they are also looking, what do we do on the bad days? What do we do when everything is, seems to be against you? How do we steward those seasons? I think we can easily look around though and we can be depressed <laughs> by what we don't have, by or what we don't get stewarded. We look at what someone else have and we start comparing, don't we? We start comparing with our neighbor's car and we see that they have a nicer car or they have a clean car, <laughs> hello. Uh, you don't know, they, they have a bigger house, a bigger apartment, their apartment is facing the right way, they get all the sun. <laughs> Their kids, they behave nicer. We compare wives, we compare marriages, we compare jobs, we compare salaries, we compare so many things. And social media isn't helping us either. <laughs> you know, but we, we're comparing really our behind the scenes reality with someone else's highlight reel. But I think the most important thing that we have to make sure we don't miss here for every man, every woman, every child, every older person, every adult, that the battle that we need to win it's not one at the gym, it's not one at the workplace, it's not one at the school, the schoolyard, it's not even one around the dinner table. It's not online either. The battle that every single one of us, the battlefield that all of us must conquer is in our mind. It's the battle of our mind. And today I wanna speak a message called Mind Games. Mind Games. These 15 centimeters between your ears is a supercomputer. I mean, that, 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 those 15 centimeters contain a computer that has 2.5 million gigabytes. That's equivalent to 75,000 mobile phones. That's how much computing memory that you have walking around with. It's crazy. And this, 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 this mind of ours, one of the primary functions of this supercomputer is to constantly filter what we need and what we don't need. Every single day, every single one of us, we get hundreds of thousands of impressions and pieces of information. As you walk here to, walked into the building today, your mind saw everything. You didn't, but your mind did. Your mind saw everything. It saw the people on the road, it saw, it saw the, 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 the clothes, it saw the colors, it, it even it picked up all the smells, it heard all the sounds, it, it looked at everyone that was in the foyer, it looked at, at the ceiling, the, the floor, it, as you're walking in, it's, it's picking up all the impressions. But one of the primary jobs of your mind is to constantly make these microsecond choices of what needs to be filtered out what needs to be stored in the subconsciousness and what needs to be brought to your remembrance. What you need to focus on. Now this filtering technique is very interesting because we can manipulate with it. Have you ever bought something or been interested in something? Let's say a car or a, 
or a, an outfit or a certain brand, and what happens? Suddenly, you see it where? Everywhere. You know, the first time you buy a car, you're driving, and your kids, what are they doing? Oh, they've got it too. They've got it too. Everybody's got it. <laughs> it's like crazy how everyone bought this car at the same time as us. You know, you get that one outfit, and then suddenly you're walking down Stroyd. You're like, oh, wait, what? I thought I was the only one who had it. And now everyone's got it. There must have been a sale on. No, they were always there. It's called the frequency illusion. Or the more technical term is the, the batter meinhof phenomenon. <laughs> it, the truth is, all those cars, all those T-shirts, <laughs> all those watches, all those brands, all of it was always there. But your brain didn't know that you needed to see it. So what happens is that now you actually have said to yourself, oh, I enjoy this. This, this car is of value to me. So now when you're driving down the road, now when you're walking down the road, now your brain is going, oh, wait, you want to see this car. <laughs> so now it's not filtering those away anymore. Now it's picking it up and saying, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Just like you can walk into a foyer and not see anyone, but suddenly you see someone. Why? Because your brain goes, hey, you know that person. <laughs> you want to see that person. And they bring that person to the forefront of your thinking. We've often said in church, be careful what you look at. Because what you look at, eventually you start to believe in. And what you believe in will start to shape who you're becoming. It's interesting because the Bible often uses looking and believing interchangeably. <laughs> you know, so the mind, it's really, it's the headquarter. You can get physically strong. You can get good at what you do. You can earn more money. You can get a bigger house. You can secure all the things you've dreamt about. But if your mind isn't right... It will lead us down the same roads and the same choices again and again. Because our mind is our GPS system. Have you ever wondered why you find yourself in the same toxic relationships again and again? The same destructive habits again and again? The same places of regret again and again? It could be big regrets, small regrets. You know, you achieve the milestones you want to achieve, yet somehow you constantly find yourself back at where you didn't want to go. See, if your mind is a GPS system and your GPS system is set on destruction, no one chooses that, but it could be a whole bunch of reasons for that, but it's just set on destructive behavior. We might not call it that, but it's just set on that. Well, it doesn't matter if you find yourself in a place of blessing because what will your mind do? Rerouting rerouting, and somehow even the best opportunity somehow ends up destroyed. Even the best relationship ends up destroyed. Even the dream job ends up destroyed. Why? Because your mind. Your mind is set on a certain destination. No wonder Paul, he writes in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy... To offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but, everybody say, but, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I like the, the, the last thing Phil said as he invited me up here was, you know, in changing our minds. That's exactly what we're doing right now. We are changing our minds. By the renewing of our mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Paul is saying, really in a way, he's saying, you used to have a GPS system set on destruction. Now, with God's help, which is what grace is, grace is God's help. He says, with God's help, you can change the destination from destruction to God's will. From destruction to to life, from destruction to blessing, from destruction to purity, from destruction to life forevermore, from destruction to love. You can change the destination so that even if you find yourself in places that are bad, the places of hurt, places that are toxic, what's gonna happen now? Rerouting, rerouting. And now your mind, now your spirit is going to lead you to this place, the new destination that we find in Christ Jesus. 
No wonder we say in church that your direction is more important than your position. Your direction is more important than your position. Think about the so-called prodigal son. For those of you who don't know this story, there's a guy, Jesus tells a story of a man who had two sons, a father who had two sons. And one of the sons, he basically says to his dad, you are as dead to me, so I want my inheritance. You're, you are already consider you dead, so I want my inheritance. He gets his inheritance, and he goes off, and the Bible says he wastes it. He, he, has, he throws big parties, he's, he wastes all his money to the point where he gets to a place where he has no food, he has no home, all his friends that were there because he had money, they had now gone. And the Bible says that he gets to this place where he is sitting in the dirt, surrounded by animals, which really was just an external, you know, external reality, external representation of what was going on inside of you. Remember, your inner and outer world will always realign. Your inner and outer world will always, real. it doesn't happen instantly, but eventually your outer world will align to what is going on inside of you. Think about King Saul. You remember King Saul? King Saul, you know, he was, he was king, he was in the palace, he was the first king of Israel. You know, God said, I will be your leader, and people said, no, the, the people of Israel said, we don't want you, we want a king like everyone else. Isn't it great to make a decision out of comparison? We want, you know, we want our own king. It's like, okay, here's king. They got Saul. Saul was the king. But what was going on inside of Saul? He was jealous. He was proud. He was insecure. He was making decisions based on him being afraid of people. So what happened? Eventually, his outer world realigned with his inner world. He was shrinking on the inside, and eventually God said, all right, let's realign the two worlds. And so his outer world got taken away from him, the, the, the kingdom got taken away from him. And in that moment, you know, people would have been wondering, who's gonna be our king? And God said, I know a man. He's just a shepherd right now, that's his outer world. He's just, a, he's out of sight and out of mind. No one knows him. He has no public acclaim, but his inner world. Man, he sings songs to me. He is faithful. Man, he is so good that even when the lions and the bears, they show up, he doesn't fear for his own life. He takes them out because he's doing so well with what the Father has entrusted to him. It is time to realign his outer world with the size that it is going on inside of him. What does Proverbs 23, 7 say? As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. As a man thinks, thinks, mind games, as a man thinks, so is he. So the younger brother was sitting there amongst the animals. And in Luke, we are told in Luke 15, 17, it says that when he came to his senses, he said to himself. When he came to his senses, he said to himself, and then he starts reasoning with himself. And in verse 20, he says, so he got up and he went to his father's house. See, his position was not good. His position was in the filth. His position was in the dirt. His position was in a place that you don't want to be, but his direction was he was on his way to the Father's house. He was on his way to restore a relationship that was broken. My friend, forget for a moment where you are at right now in life. Forget where you are at in your mind. Forget where you are at in your habits. Forget where you are at, wherever you, whatever you're looking at, in your finances, in your spirituality, in your marriage, with your relationship with your kids. Forget all of that where you're at right now. I want to ask you today, where are you going? Where are you going? And if you're taking notes, why don't you ask, write that down. Where am I going? And this week, take some time and answer that. If I was to play out the direction in the, of, my, of my finances, of my choices, of my behavior, of my speaking, of my work, where will I end up? In which direction am I moving my life? In which direction is your mind going? What is your GPS set to? Is it set on healthy thought patterns or unhealthy thought patterns? Is it set on comparison, lust, Anger, hurt, pain, excuses, reasons why not, negativity, rebellion, 
destruction, doubt. See, if your GPS doesn't change, it doesn't matter how nice a place you are at right now. And I don't want to speak doom and gloom over you, church. Sorry, we've had so much fun today. But eventually, your outer world will realign with your inner world. Eventually. And so, you know, it is the grace of God that it doesn't happen instantly. It is the grace of God that he goes, come on, come on, fix your inner world. Come on, let's get that GPS sorted. Come on, with God's help, let's renew your mind so that the inner world and the outer world can be aligned. This young man, he said, it says that he came to his senses and he said to himself, let me ask you a second question today. What do you say to yourself? What do you say to yourself? If you are taking notes, why don't you write this down? What am I saying to myself? What am I saying to myself over and over again? Because what you say to yourself instructs your mind what to filter out. What you say to yourself, remember the frequency illusion? Remember the frequency illusion? Yeah, five people, great. It's good to know that I've, you know, really, this, this thought is catching on. You see, Think of last time you were looking for something. Okay, all the men, come on. Like, remember when you go to the fridge and you open the fridge? You know, you're, you're, you're opening the fridge and then you're looking at this fridge and then you're saying, what do you say to yourself? I cannot find the ketchup. I cannot find it. I'm opening the fridge and I cannot find the ketchup or something else. The butter, I cannot find the butter, and what happens nine out of 10 times? Your wife, God bless her, wanders over, reaches over your shoulder, and takes the butter and gives it to you, often with some kind words on the way. What happened? And what do we say? I didn't see it. And if you're married, it's super healthy like ours, that starts a big discussion. <laughs> what do you mean you didn't see it? It's right in front of you. No, it was not. You must have hidden it. It wasn't in the right, the same place as it normally is. You're both right. Because as you're saying to yourself, I cannot find it, what's your mind doing? Well, it's taking all the impressions in. Remember, your mind's primary job is to what? Filter. So they're saying, okay, you don't need to know the pickles, you don't need to know the, the eggs, you don't need to know this. You're looking for butter. Oh, wait, you can't find the butter. That's what you keep telling yourself. Filter it out. So you didn't see it. No, you actually didn't see it. Your brain did, but you didn't because you filtered it out. And girls, don't be too cocky because how many times do you stand in front of a wardrobe that is overflowing with milk and honey and saying to yourself, I have nothing to wear. And the men, we look over the shoulder, and if wisdom has taught us anything, we say nothing. <laughs> you just walk away, but give enough of a sound to let her know you were there. <laughs> Experts tell us that we think of the same thoughts, that 75% of our thoughts are the same thoughts. That really, that we don't have many original thoughts. That we, we just meditate on the same things over and over and over again. Listen, that doesn't matter if you're looking for ketchup or butter or a dress. But it does matter if you're looking for purpose, value, identity, and the will of God. See, your mind will filter out. It's playing games with you. It's listening to you. This young man, he said to himself, what are you saying to yourself? Because if you are constantly saying negativity and speaking that over yourself, it doesn't matter what God puts in front of you. God can say, Psalm 139 verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know this full well. But like the ketchup, you don't even see that verse. Because that cannot relate to me. That cannot be about me. Because I'm not wonderful. I'm ugly. I'm a mistake. 
I'm not fearfully made. I'm fearful. <laughs> I'm not fearfully made. I'm not wonderful. I'm not like them. I'm not like her. I'm not like him. So even when the promises of God are presented to you, oh, your, your mind sees it, your mind hears it, but it filters it out. Because, hey, you didn't want to find the catcher. Oh, this is not for you because you say that you are bound. You say that you are not wonderful. You say that you are a mistake. You say that you are not able. You say you are not lovable. No wonder we need our minds renewed. So how do we do this? How do we renew our minds, church? A few simple thoughts. Firstly, number one, read the Bible. Read the Bible. Re read the Bible. Read the Bible. Let us be blind. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by what? The washing with water through the Word. See, the Bible is described as many things. It's described as the surgeon's scalpel that is sharp enough to cut through even between motivation and desire. It's described as a hammer that can break even the strongest strongholds of thought patterns. It is described as a mirror where we can look at and we can see the things that are less than ideal. It is described as water that washes our mind. You don't always need a high pressure hose. You just need a constant flow. Just a constant flow. Just a constant flow. And eventually the dirt will rise. Eventually the things will be flushed out of the system. When a lawyer once came to Jesus and asked him about eternal life, Jesus just answered in Luke 10, 26, what is written in the Bible? What is written in the law? How do you read it? I love it. Jesus didn't just come with the answer. He says, no, no, you've got to learn to read this for yourself. Yeah. Or you can come up to me and ask me afterwards what I think. But really, what, how do you read the Bible? Because if you're not reading the Bible, all I'm doing is spraying a little bit of water on you. That's not going to clean your mind. You've got to get under the flow yourself. You've got to turn that tap on and let it flow. Flush the system. Flush the system. Some of you are so dehydrated. And your mind is like, and you know, there's an old saying that says, make a man thirsty enough and he will drink poison. So many Christians live like that. We don't drink from the Word of God. So we just drink whatever we can get. And so we end up in toxic relationships. We end up with habits. We end up in, in all these destructive places. Church, read the Bible. Why do we come to church? We come to church so we can sit under the Word because, hey, you cannot skip right now. You cannot pause right now. You cannot be distracted and make pancakes while I'm preaching right now. No, no, you're in church so the Word of God can have a full effect in your life. That's not to you know, say anything against those of you watching online. But if there's a church near you, you need to be in church. Be in church. Let the Word of God wash over you and wash over you and wash over you. Write the scriptural references down. Read over them during the week. Get it in your mind. Read the Bible. How do we re renew our minds? Be in community. Be in community. You cannot be discipled in isolation. You cannot be discipled in isolation. How are you gonna learn servanthood when you're all by yourself? How are you gonna be humble when you're all by yourself? Man, I'm so humble. I'm the most humble person in the room. <laughs> I'm such a good leader. Dude, you cannot do that. You cannot be discipled in isolation. Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We serve, 
We join connect groups. We are part of each other's lives, not because we have to, not because that's what we do around here. No, because that is how God is outworking His salvation in our lives. Because as we serve, what happens? I bump into you, you bump into me. And I'm like, Oof, I didn't like that. No, deal with it. What's going on? Iron is sharpening iron. Someone confronts me. Hey, Thomas, you're getting a bit of an attitude. Say what? Shut up. No. <laughs> iron sharpening iron. If you're just sitting in attendance, like we love that you're here. Like seriously, we love you here. Please don't go. We love that you're here. But there's so much more to this than just staring at someone's neck for 90 minutes every Sunday. Join a team. Join a connect group. Not just to build church, to build you. To renew you. To see the gifts come out of you. We renew our mind in community. The theme of this chapter is called Deep Dive. We're going deep into the Word. It, it, this memory verse, it comes out of a passage, Ephesians 4.11. It says, Christ Himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. And what, what, what's our job? It is to equip His people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then, remember the GPS, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and the craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. No, no, we're gonna have a secure biblical GPS. And then we get to the memory verse for this chapter. Instead, speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. Because we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is Christ. From Him, the whole body joined together, held together by every supporting ligament. That's you and me. We grow and we build itself up in love as each part does its work. You need me, I need you. If you're not doing what you're called to do, we're missing something. The body is, is weaker. We need each other. We need a community that speaks the truth in love. That speaks the truth in love. Look at those two words, truth and love. Some people love the truth, but there's, there's not much love. Oh, truth hurts, that's why. No, you're just an idiot. Like you're rude. Oh, I'm just speaking the truth. That's great, but it's truth in love. Others, they all love, but there's no truth. But love without truth is not really love. That's like saying, I love my kids, that's why I would never challenge them when they play on the freeway. No, you don't love them. Because it's love and truth, they go hand in hand. John 1.14 says, Jesus, he came with what? Grace and truth. Grace and truth. A rich young ruler came to Jesus, asked about eternal life. What should I do? How do I get this? And Jesus, you know, he had tried everything. He tried religion. He tried everything. And in Mark 10.21, it says, Jesus looked at him, loved him, and told him. See, love tells you what you need to hear, not just what you want to hear. Love tells you what you need to hear, not just what you want to hear. Get around people that will tell you what you need to hear, not just what you want to hear. And see, today, Jesus is offering truth in love. Let's finish with this verse, Romans 8.1. There, there, there is there, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. What, what Paul is saying here is, hey, I'm, I'm not here to condemn you and I know Jesus is not here to condemn you. But when every human was born, we were born in sin. And what he's saying, let's, let's, let's just update the language. What he's saying is that we were all born with a GPS set on destruction. So when we all came to be, our natural tendency was to move towards evil. All of us, selfishness, 
selfish desire. We try, we do better, but we keep rerouting. Oh man, how do I get out of this? You need a software update. You need someone and you can't do it because your selfishness will take over. My selfishness takes over. So what, what happened? The help of God, the grace of God. He steps in and he goes, would you, would you trust me with the destination? Would you, would you trust me with the destination? So, so what do I do? I hand over control and he puts in, there you go. Rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. And now and then I stuff up and I take some steps back and God goes, hey, all good, rerouting, rerouting. And then I make mistakes again and it's it felt good. It's like rerouting, rerouting. Truth in love, truth in love. It's mind games, not condemning, helping, not exposing, revealing to heal. And I'd love to pray for anyone here today that maybe you have been trying, you've been stuck and you, maybe your outer world hasn't realigned yet. Maybe your, your outer world looks good. Your outer world, you, you, you're just holding everything together. That marriage, you're just holding it together. That business, that dream, even your own personal life, you're holding it all together. But you thank God that there hasn't been a realignment with what's actually going on on the inside. And today, you just wanna make a decision where you're saying, hey God, in your grace, I really want a new destination. Or maybe your outer world has realigned and you find yourself in a place of brokenness on the outside. And really what, what, what you're experiencing on the outside is what so many are experiencing on the inside. So there's no condemnation, but there is just a help of God saying, hey, can, can, we, just, can we just change direction today? Can, can we put in a new destination? the will of God. Let's renew our minds so we can understand God's will, the perfect will of God for our lives. So could I get everyone to close your eyes, bow your heads, and if you're here today, whether you're in Olvo or who's online, in the parents' lounges or in the room, even if you're watching this delayed in a few weeks from now online, I believe God's timing, you're getting this message. If you're here today and you just know, man, I, I, I've got the wrong destination. I want Jesus. I've been trying this in my own strength and today I realize I just need, I need Jesus in my life. I'd love to pray for you. I'm just gonna quickly count to three. Time's almost up, so I'm just gonna do this quick, but this is important for, for anyone to miss out on. I'm gonna count to three and when I get to three, I want every person who says, Thomas, I don't know Jesus the way you're speaking about him, but today I wanna invite Jesus in my life. I wanna hand over the control to Him and get Him to put in a new destination, His perfect will for my life. Look, on the outside, everything might look as if you got everything together. You might even look like you got everything together in your spiritual walk with Jesus. But if, if we were to be completely honest with ourselves, the inner world is not matching up. And today, it's just time to come home. So I'm gonna to count to three, and when I say three, I want every person who says, that's me, please include me in this prayer. When I say three, just lift your hand. You ready? One, two, three. Just lift your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful, thank you, thank you, thank you. In Olbo, in Aarhus, why don't you raise your hands as well? I might not see it, that's okay. At the end of the day, you're not doing this for me. Thank you, thank you, you guys. This is between you and God. Anyone else? Beautiful, beautiful. Such a beautiful moment, just a sense of people coming home. A sense of people handing over the control. Thank you, thank you. You can put your hands down. We're gonna say a prayer together. And I'm just gonna say it line by line, but I wanna invite everyone to say this prayer, especially those who lifted your hand. But we're all gonna pray because we're one big community here. So come on, just say this prayer after me. Just say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for my sin. But today I choose you. I make you my Lord and Savior. From today, 
from today. I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm a follower of Jesus. I am forgiven. I'm forgiven. And I am free. And I am free. Take over the control. I trust you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we congratulate all those people? So good. So beautiful. Why don't we stand to our feet in the other locations here as well? I just want to pray for one more group of people and then uh, just want to, want to say one thing to those of you that just made that decision. But if you're here today and you are a Christian, but you just, I guess you feel stuck, stuck in your thoughts. What are you saying to yourself? What direction am I moving in? You feel stuck in those. That you, you keep rerouting, let's just say it like that. Rerouting, rerouting. Come on, this summer, we all gonna be rerouting somewhere in Europe, you know? Rerouting, rerouting, turn around. You know, like rerouting, rerouting. And you're like, you're constantly just in that. You mean well, like you genuinely love Jesus. You genuinely love Jesus. You just keep finding yourself rerouting can we just believe this summer that things change can, can, we, can we believe as you read the word like don't come to me in the summer and say nothing happened if you haven't read your bible I'm sorry it doesn't work like that you can't not take the medicine and then get, act, and then get angry at the, at the doctor you get what I'm saying like, like I'm for real like it's amazing that people, this is happening in my life are you reading the bible like, we want Bible results without, you know, living by the Bible principles. So, so, so read the Bible. Get into community, okay? Get in the flow. Get in the flow of people sharpening you, challenging you, making you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> That's community. And be in the Word. Read the Bible. And let's believe this summer that there is enough Word that is coming through that is starting all the dirt, all the junk, all the funk, all the things from the, you know, from the neck up, it starts to get washed out. Can we believe that? That when we get to the other side of summer, there's not so much rerouting, but we're out on the freeway. We go in the right direction. We're driving towards the things of God, towards the promise of God, towards the will of God. There will still be speed bumps. There will still be road work. There will still be things that needs to be dealt with, but at least we are now on our way. So just with every eye closed again, if that's you, you're just saying, I, I want to believe for that for my life, for our marriage, for our family, for my kids. I want to believe for that this summer. When you raise your hand all over this place, Jesus, we just thank you for your grace, your help, Lord God. I pray for every marriage. I pray for every family. I pray for every dad, every mom. I pray for every child, Lord Jesus. I pray for every person, Lord Jesus, that are just committing themselves this summer, Lord God, are saying, we don't, we don't want to just dive deep. Lord God, we want you to change us. Lord, we want the, the washing of the Word to renew our mind, Lord God. We want the, the fellowship of the community to change and sharpen our character, Lord God. We just pray for every person that is reaching out to you right now, Lord God. And I pray by the end of this summer that we will be able to tell some amazing stories of what you have done in our lives, Lord God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. And everyone said... Amen. Amen? Amen. So you know what to do. You've got to go home and you've got to read the Bible. And we can talk about that another time. I know that Nathan Finocchio, uh, he's coming this chapter. He's a Bible teacher. And unless he's changing his mind, he's, he told me he wants to preach on uh, just why do we actually believe the Bible is relevant? Like, why, why are we reading this, you know? And um, so that's, that's going to be fantastic. And But I, just... Get a Bible app, do whatever you need to do, read, and then join a community, join a group, join a team, and, um, and let's go. Hey, all of you that lifted your hand before, it's your lucky day. Not only have you found Jesus, but you get a Bible. <laughs> you can start to read the Bible today. And uh, we have English version, we have Danish version. So on the way out at our next uh, team, next lounge, uh, whether it's in the room or it's in um, one of the other locations, parents' lounge, grab a Bible. Your friend who brought you, they can walk you over. Grab the language that you, know, that you find yourself most at ease in and then start to read it every single day. Keep finding yourself in community. Come back tonight, five o'clock. I'm preaching again this message. Maybe you have some friends that you're like, he needs to hear this. She needs to hear this. 
But maybe the only way for them to come is if you come again. I'm not trying to get you to come again. I'm trying to get your friend here, okay? We start at five o'clock. Um, so I wanna just encourage you. Why don't you give him a call and just say, hey, there's plenty of time for you to come and then let's go out for dinner afterwards and let's talk through the message. Let's, let's talk through and see how this relates to your life. Is that okay? Amazing. Let's pray together. Why don't you grab the hands of the person next to you? What are you reaching? What are you giving me there? Young adults hang out today in Valby Park. Oh, there's a boxing machine at this back guy. I mean, look at this. There is hip hop grind. Luke, aren't you here? Didn't I see you up there? Luke, there's Luke. I mean, look, look at that. That's Luke. Give us a wave. Luke, just follow Luke down to hip hop grind, okay? He will have, are you going there today? You are now, okay. Follow him, okay? Uh, and then from there, you can walk, continue walking up to Valby Park. I mean, it's a little bit longer walk. Um, and then there is, what's that? The Hangout, yeah, it's in Valby Park. Oh, it's Frisbee. Oh, Golf Frisbee, is that what it is? Yeah, nice, that's important. And then there's a boxing machine out there as well in the foyer, you can hear, that's amazing. There's so much good stuff on this. Tonight, 5 p.m., link to all who's 1146, message and altar call, end link to all who's MC spot, goodbye, Thomas, and 11, 12, 23, that was 10 minutes ago, there's outro music. We're gonna pray for each other. Jesus, we just thank you so much for your grace, for your help in our lives, Lord God. We just pray, Lord, for all the things that we, are, that we know, Lord God, could be better, should be better, Lord God. We know that you don't condemn us, but you wanna help us. And so, Lord, we just commit our lives again to you. I pray for every single person that's here today. May you bless them. May you go before them. May you shine your face towards them, Lord God. Lord, where there is sickness, we just declare your healing. Where there's lack, we thank you for your provision. Lord, we pray for every relationship. Every father-son, father-daughter relationship, Lord God, we pray and we bless it in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just know if families are strong, nations are strong. So we pray for strength of families today, Lord God. I pray for families that are under attack, Lord Jesus. We just pray for reconciliation. Lord, I pray for, for people as they send that Happy Father's Day message out this week, Lord God. Maybe they're sending it begrudgingly, Lord God. I just pray that it will heal wounds, that it will build bridges, it will reconcile relationships, Lord God. And Father, we lift up our friends, our family members, those who don't know you. And I pray, use us in any way that you see, Lord God, to reach out an invitation for them to come and see for themselves that they too might know their Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said... Amen. Come on, can we thank God for His Word? Amen. We really hope that that encouraged and blessed you. If you made a decision for Jesus, a massive congratulations from us. We would love to be in contact with you, send you a Bible and connect you to a local church. So just below in the details of this episode, there's a different way to contact us. I can I encourage you to reach out so that we can help you. Obviously, if you live anywhere near one of our physical locations, we really hope to see you in person very soon. There is nothing like being in the room. Can I also encourage you, if this blessed you, why don't you share this with friends and you know, make sure you pass it on to them as well. Make sure to click, click subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode we send out. God bless you.